Guys, help me out. What is this? <coughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what is this? Sinus. Sinus. All right. Almost. Oh, yeah. So, what is this? Yeah, because if you think it's sine 3x, that's what it should be, but this derivative doesn't equal what I have. So I can just even out the constants, yeah? Does that help? I mean, same thing happens on, that, on the problem, yeah. Now hopefully you didn't put plus C on the third, on the part C of three, yeah? Because that's a definite integral. The C's cancel, okay. Anything else? Okay, okay. Uh, this is... Oh, was two just the, the infinite limit thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean, oh, well, that one, okay. Yeah, so if I had like integral, it doesn't really matter. Tangent x plus x dx, okay. From uh, uh, two to seven, doesn't matter. Kind of like that's a two. Um, what gets things started? Delta x, so that'll be 7 minus 2. I like it. And then what's x i going to be? Yeah, because I know I'm starting at 2, and then I take so many steps. Okay, everybody with me? And then you got your f of x i. In this case, in this case it would be Tangent of 2 plus 5i over n plus 2 plus 5i over n. Wait, I thought, uh, what's it called? The, the number in front of the 5i over n would be where the y starts. No. No. Nope. This is the function. These are the inputs. And your inputs start at 2, yes? Does that make sense? That these are the this is the inputs, and they start at two, and then they go from there, step, 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 and then and then you just throw it in. So you got the limit, got the sum, f of x i. You would just put this shit there, and then you would put this shit there. And you just got to throw stuff in. Ah, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> so if you Got the first part of the bonus thing. I will give you, I'll give you two points if you get the whole thing done. I don't know if anybody managed to get the whole thing done. But if you got the first part of it set up good, I'll give you a point for that. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anything from homework or in general? Yes. Uh, so we're on 5.5 now. Yes. And, and that's what we're going to do in class today? Yes. Okay. Uh, I like that question. 5.4, number 4. <clears throat> Holy crap, where are you? There you are. Come here. So what is this on asking? Verify by differential. Oh, okay. Oh, I love this. This is pretty much exactly where I was going to start today. Um, look at this beautiful thing. Mmm. That's creepy when you do that, Jeff. All right. Um, now listen. <clears throat> if if three squared is nine, what's the square root of nine? Three. Holy shit! So if I do something and I get an answer one way, how do I check it in math? I do the opposite operation the other way. So if the integral of this is this, then the what of this is this. Yeah, so it's just derivative. And I don't give a shit how ugly that looks. Derivatives are relatively easy now. Do you guys agree? Oh, yeah. If you have to do an integral versus derivative, you're going to want a derivative almost every time. Yes? Mm -hmm. So no matter how ugly it is, it's just a derivative. Who cares? Yes? Have we talked about 5.4 yet? Because you gave us a worksheet on 5.5. 5.4 is 4.9. Oh, 
Oh. Five four says, remember when we asked you find the antiderivative? Okay. Now we can just put this symbol and that's the same question. Yay. Yay, exactly. That's the right answer. You guys all good? Okay. I that one is I I tried to find the derivative, but I got three fifths times that. You got what, sir? I got three fifths times what it's supposed to be. Oh, all right. Well, uh, Keep looking at it. If you can't find it, just turn it in and I'll try to find it, wherever the mistake is. I don't think it's a typo because that's always a possible answer is it's a typo. But... All right. Anything else? Homework? Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. Last time we sort of started talking about a process for handling. So, so now that we got the basics of integration. And that it, integration, which is finding areas, is directly related to antiderivatives, which was a huge step. I try to make a big deal out of that because it is actually a huge deal to connect those two. Because now, beautiful shortcut. Holy shit. Derivatives are easy. Doing something the opposite way is always a little harder, but it's still most of the time relatively easy. Would you agree? Maybe? Okay. All right. Now, of course, most of the time is a key word there, right? Um, so let me do something a little bit strange. Let's see if you guys agree with me. Sort of related to that problem we just had a second ago. Let's see if this thing is focused. Okay, it looks like it's good. Can you guys real quick do the, if f of x is the natural log of 2x cubed minus seven, can you please figure out what f prime of x is? Actually, let me do one little thing. Plus a constant. I can't figure out what constant I want, so I'm just going to put C for kind of sure. Just any constant I want. What section does this pertain to? 5, 5. All right. It should be done. It should be easy. What's the derivative of a natural log of anything? One over that thing times 6x squared. And, of course, this derivative is 0. So I get 6x squared over 2x cubed minus 7. Okay, that's old shit, right? Old news. So what's that doing in this chapter, Jeff? Well, now, can anybody immediately please tell me what the integral of this is? I like that. I like that adjustment there. We can actually make it the absolute value, and it's more generally true. That's true. So, all right. Yes? Be really careful. F prime is derivative. Okay. So, don't worry, man. Trust me. And I, I pointed this out before. It's shifting gears. And if anybody knows how to drive stick, and you can think back to when you're first learning. Did you ever do the <laughs> right? So in there, when we're doing antiderivatives and derivatives sort of all at the same time, we have to know when to shift gears. So with derivatives, constants just disappear, of course, because they have flat slope. They have zero slope. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make here is um, when they ask you a question like that one we had just a minute ago, if you know the derivative of a function is something, then the integral of that thing is easy. You're just going backwards, right? Now, what if the question, so why is, why would this question be much more difficult? Is something missing? <laughs> This question is really hard. What's the difference? This question was relatively easy, especially because we knew the derivative of whatever, but why is this question really hard? I like it, because you don't have the derivative piece inside. I don't have the chain rule there. I really want this to make sense. You can't, so some people will tell me the answer is this. What would you say to this person here? Uh, uh, x to the fourth over two minus seven x plus c. This this is my favorite thing in the world. What, what did that person do? 
Yeah. Come on now. What did that person do? Yeah, they did the numerator as if it was its own thing, the denominator. No, this is one function. You, you're not allowed to just go in. I can't even do the derivative of this piece by piece. There's a whole quotient rule to do, right? And the integral should always be more difficult than a derivative would be. So if you start to integrate and, you just, and, and you're doing parts by themselves, that makes no sense. The derivative of this thing is not going to be this. The derivative of this thing is going to be disgusting. Yes? Maybe? Yes? Can you just break it up into two functions, like 1 over 2x cubed and then 1 over I got excited for a second because you could use a, a process that breaks that up. Yeah. You could use partial fractions. <laughs> yeah, you could. Okay. We could, but that one really, really be disgusting, but you could use partial fractions, total. I like it. Okay, so that's going to come later. So my point right now is the same point I've been trying to make. If I have a more complicated function than just something with an x, so, so the integral of sine x is easy. Why? Because its inside is just x. There's no requirement to have something else inside. That's easy. There was no weird differentiation rule to get me here, so undifferentiating should be easy. Yes? And what is this? Good. Negative cosine x. Plus c. Plus c. Okay. But what's wrong with this thing? What's, yeah, good. What's supposed to be there to be able to do this directly? What should be here? 2x. Because that would be, because I know, I feel like that should just be the cosine of that with some adjustment shit. But I can't do this because it doesn't have the chain rule piece that needs to happen. I really want this to make sense. So I can't, we cannot currently do this integral. Notice how I said that, right? But if I had this, this is easy shit. This is easy. Right? Because what, what do you hope it is? What's the, what's the uh, where's this come from? I like it. And then to check it, what is this guy's derivative? It would be sine x squared times 2x. Hey, shit, look. Why was that easy? Because it had its chain rule piece there. Okay. So this idea of u substitution is integration's answer to chain rule. So, of course, it's only going to work if the parts you need are there. So let me be really specific about what I mean by that. So what if I had this? I'm going to make one little adjustment to this. What if I had... Zoom out a little bit, Jeff. There. What if I had this instead? Um, what do you got, buddy? There. All right. Now, of course, we can see very easily what do I wish was here. A two, it is just a constant. Constants, I don't give the first shit if they're there or not. I don't. Because I can make them show up. Yes? If I put a two here, well, let me get multi color stuff happening. What do you got, buddy? Sure. Come here, red. I don't even know if it's going to show up. If I put a two here, what do I have to do at the same time to make this legal? But when I, does everybody get that? I wish there was a two there, because then it would be as easy as this was. Well, I'll, I'll just put a freaking two there, right? Maybe. Okay. Now watch. So some of you guys might, so then this would be, basically, this would be the same thing here, except it would be one half of it. Is that cool? That one half will just kind of come for the ride. Because what's this? That. So what's this? That. Half of that, yes? Are you guys with me? Okay, now, here's the big thing. And, and there is a way to teach you sub that, dear God, I wish, well, anyway, I wish some of my colleagues would stop teaching it this way because then it feels like, oh, it's magic. I can make anything work. Uh, no. 
So if I had this, we already looked at this, but can you guys tell me why can't I just make something show up here? What would I need to be here? I need a 2x. Can I do this? Well, let me ask this a different way. Why can I not do this? That's a variable. And what does the integral see as its variable? sees x. So how in the world can I bring an x outside? I can't do that. Because really, when I do this, what I'm doing is, don't worry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to formalize this in a minute. I just want to talk about the ideas a bit. What I'm really doing is 1 half times 2. So overall, I just didn't do anything, right? And then I can take that out because it's a constant. So if I try to do that here, if I say I got this, I'm just talking about ideas now, so I'm a little bit all over the place. Um, if I try to do this, I can't take this whole thing out because it's not just a constant. So the integrals I can do right now are basic integrals that are directly related to derivatives, like integral sign, or more complicated ones where the inside is not just x, but it has its chain rule piece. Maybe with the wrong constant, but who gives a shit about constants? I can bring them in and out all day long. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. So let's formalize this a little bit, make this a little bit easier to look at. So what if I had integral, what you got, buddy? Uh, okay, let's do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're going to kind of adjust the way we look at things. Do you see what I would call an inside function? Do you see a function that's sort of trapped somewhere? I really want this to make sense. Do you see a function that is sort of like in somewhere else? Like it's stuck somewhere. What is it? Yeah, this guy, right? Do you guys agree this is stuck on the bottom? Is this thing's derivative in the integral? And we don't care about constants, right? So what is the bottom's derivative? <coughs> something x squared, right? Because again, I don't give a shit about constants. It's something x squared. Is it in the integral? Yes. And again, is the x squared kind of free to move around? Could I put the x squared with the dx? I could totally all day. All right. So there's a function that's sort of trapped somewhere. It could either be inside of a square root or under the, in the denominator or, or whatever. In the, in the exponent, it's stuck. The only way I could do the integral then would be if its derivative is outside somewhere. So watch this. This is how we formalize this process. Let u equal this. And we just said that guy's derivative is basically in there, right? Minus a constant, but we don't. We just want the variable piece because the constants are easy. And what is so? What's du? Eighteen x squared. Dx. Dx. There we go. So look at this. All right. So some of my colleagues, and you might be one of the people that have seen this. Some of my colleagues on to solve for dx and shit, but no, dear God, stop that shit. All right. Do I have this in here? No, I have x squared dx, don't I? So what do I need here? 18. And if I do this, what do I have to put outside? 1 over 18. Now let's rewrite this integral. 1 18th integral. What is 18 x squared dx? du. And what is this? You. Me. Yeah, you. Let me stop for a minute. Is that? So what we've captured is what this really looks like. This looks like 1 over something times its derivative, because that's what this piece was. 
1 over something times its derivative. That's what that looks like. And look at that integral we got now. That integral kicks a lot of ass. What is this integral? Almost. Plus C, I like it. And of course, don't circle that shit. Because the we developed you. The problem is asking me what's this integral. Then don't give me this answer. So what is the answer? Yeah, that's what U is. Bam. What's that? Yeah, me too. So this worked because if you started to think about this guy's derivative, it would be 1 over this times the derivative of this. And because the x squared was in there, it's doable. Okay. Is that okay. the bigger way of thinking? This is that side going that way as far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, compared to other ways you've learned it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like when I took calc and physics, I learned it like two different times. And I think this is where it's easier. Like well, yeah, because a lot of times physics people, we're... Uh, because I'm also a physicist person. We're, we're less interested in theory. We're more interested in just, what is it? So I can just do my... Pro I don't care about the stupid concept. I just want to figure out what this thing is, the, the flow rate or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's try another one. Um, uh, oh. Sharma's not too freaky. Um, bum, bum, bum. All right, let's let's do. Uh, you can do it, Jeff. Um, um, all right, let's do that. Yeah, sure, that's fine. I got to think ahead now. Hold on, this is always where I get in trouble. Okay, now I got it. Don't make that a five. Make that a, a ten. There we go. Okay. Trying to make something. Doing it live. All right. Plus ten. Oh, shit. You guys are going to hate me. X. There we go. Okay. Some of you guys might notice what I was trying to make happen there, but... Or maybe not. I don't know. What's the obvious inside function? Yeah. So to kind of see if this is going to be doable, I do this derivative and see if it's in there. So what is that derivative? All right. And is that in there? Yes. Totally. Yes. Good. Perfect answer. Just constants are not right. But we don't care. The important part is in there. I have to have x plus 1 because now I can build it up to be the constants right. Correct? So what do I have to do to my integral to make it match everything I need here? Yeah, multiply by 10 on the inside, divide by 10 on the outside. So now I got my, now watch this. I've got my 10x plus 10 dx. <laughs> yes? You guys see that? 10x plus 10 dx. This is what I need. And I really, now that we're kind of developing the substitution method, the whole idea of this substitution method is to take the entire integral, get rid of all the x's, replace them with u's. Because what I'm really doing is just capturing the format of the integral without all the specific details. Which is kind of nice. I'm just trying to get all the specific shit out the way so I can just see what it really is. So I can replace this with the u, and then I can replace this with u. Let's see what we get. So the one tenth still there. This is du, and of course this secant squared u. And that should hopefully be easy. <laughs> oh, so you're just moving the ten x to the ten to the dx. Yes, and this is why I really want this to make sense. The derivative part has to be free to move because otherwise you could never... Uh, what do I need to show up in my integral to be able to replace it with du? I need this to show up. 
So the 10x plus 10 piece is able to go. Can I just commute it over here? Isn't this all multiplication? So I can put the 10x plus 10 over here, and then I see this, and I can replace it with these. Bam. So that's why the u is normally, normally the piece that looks stuck. Because you can't put that with the dx then if it's stuck underneath or inside of a square root of shit. And, the, and then the, you hope that the derivative is on the top out front somewhere so then it can go with the dx. Yes? Uh, well, what happens when you have like addition and this integral stuff on it? Because then you can't use the... But remember, what's the integral of a, a, a <coughs> the addition of several terms? You can break that up into several integrals. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it. like that if I can come up with one on the fly here. Um, real quick, let's finish this one out. What is that integral? And of course, you don't end until you get back to the original variable. What was u? And of course, the nice thing is to check it, it's relatively easy because it would be taking the derivative. That's how you check. All right, let's see if I can, all right, because I, I like your question. Let me see, hold on. Uh, what would be one that makes sense? Oh, it, it, well, all right. Here, I, I know a perfect, okay, okay, I got it. I, damn it. <laughs> you guys have writing on you already. You guys suck. Look at all this paper I've used. All those trees, all right. I need paper. Let me see. I have not come ready. Oh, I can use the quizzes that nobody was here to take. Okay. 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 All right. So what if I had this? Um. Uh, let's see. What else can I? Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, I got it. All right. All right. Uh. uh sound like you had something, Jeff. I do. There it is. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a very simple example of what you're talking about, but <laughs> I like that reaction. So the the very first thing is, is there a piece of this integral that is easy as shit, has no problem at all? X squared. Yeah. So the very first thing I want to do is break it up into weird shit plus not weird shit. So that dx does sort of look as if it distributes. Uh, and I'm in the camp that actually believes it does. But some people will just say it sort of looks like it does and it doesn't. Who gives a shit? It, it just, you can break an integral up like that. We've seen that happen many times in your homework. You've had to kind of break integrals up. Now, this piece I can do right now. Maybe. <laughs> One third x cubed plus c. And this c is just going to be for the whole thing because I really want this to make sense. If you get another constant from this, you would just combine it with that constant. And so let me just say that's caught all the constants I'm going to get already. Bam. Right? And now what do I have to do to do this? Yeah, so u equals 4x squared minus 2. And what's du? 8x. 8x. Oh, I'm sorry. Get out of there, dx. dx. <coughs> so I've got the important part, and how do I make, what am I missing? An 8. So I put an 8, and I put a 1 8. And again, I already talked about this, but I just love that whole Indiana Jones. I use that so much because it's such a beautiful example. Indiana didn't quite, he had an 8 and then he put a 1 7th. Oh, Indiana. If you've never seen that movie, then what the shit. Anyway, all right. So what does this look like now? It looks like 1 8th integral. What happens on the inside? 
This is du, yes? That 8x dx is du. And then this is e to the u. I like it. And here's our part that we already did. And of course, what's that integral? e to the u and u was? Okay, cool. So Derek, I like your question because inherent in your question was a concern about does weird shit here screw other parts up, right? No, you just break them up. Yeah, if you got nice parts, break them up and just, all right, there's the nice part. Let me do the nice part. What have I done with your cap? Oh, well. oh thanks. Man. All right, so let's look at this. This is the handout from um, before. I got a couple, I think. Remember this one where we had integral practice on one side and then the U sub stuff on the other. So what I want you guys to do, let me know if you need one of these. I got two more copies of this, so hopefully less than three people need a copy. Do these first three. Jesus. It's already, it's already sorry, I just noticed the time was. Dad gummit. I'm going to catch up to you guys a little bit. These first two are pretty obvious. 
Now, one option is you could multiply this out six times. And then, yeah, I agree with that. So the inside function is that. The derivative is... I have my x to the fourth, which is what's important, right? Good. So I'm going to put a 1 15th on the outside and then a 15 inside. So this, let me do this. So this now becomes 1 15th integral u6 du. Look at that. So this would be 1 15th. Yeah, u to the 7th over 7. Yeah. Plus c. So that will be 1 over, is that 105? Yeah. Um, right, just put these together. Is that cool? And then u was this 7 plus c. Bam. Well, you gave everybody so much room on this, Jeff. Yes? get the u to the 7 over 7? That's the one part I'm not getting. The integral <laughs> the integral of x to the n dx if n is not negative 1 is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. It's it's the Oh, it's okay. Yeah. The opposite of the derivative of x to the n, right? Okay. okay. What about part B? I want to do, yeah, okay. Is that, is it, any questions on part A? Is that all right? If you keep 115 on the outside, you don't it or plus. Well, so how'd you, oh, you just had this over seven? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, I, that's fine. Or can yeah. you do like 115, and then I did like a bracket, and then I did one seventh, and then I put the other. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I wouldn't take points off. I would just put like a, why? <laughs> Let's put those things together. Okay. Uh, what's the U up here for part B? And then DU is 3x squared DX. So I don't quite have this yet, of course. So I put a... If I put a 3 inside, i got to put a 1 third outside. So I get 1 third integral. 3x squared DX is DU. And then I have... I'm going to write this as U to the 1 half. Is that cool? Is that cool? And then that's easy shit, right? So I get one third u to the three halves. So I'm going to have to put out front times two thirds. I don't know why I'm doing all this. Okay. Plus c, which will be, good lord, Jeff, two ninths u was x cubed plus 1, 3 halves, plus c. And of course, you can always check yourself by doing <coughs> derivatives. All right, I want to do, I wrote this on the board so I wouldn't forget. I want to start to show you. So uh, the basics of u sub, I'm hoping you're starting to see that it's not that far-fetched. It, it's, yes? So you don't put du back in at the end. Right. So like, see, well, on the when side. you integrate, With the those one. disappear because they're done. Okay, because of the coefficient that you put on the outside, right? No. I, I, all right, so are you asking why is the du not here? Um, I was looking at the first one. So like when I did, um, when I just asked you, yeah, about like the 1 over 7, I put the du before the c. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Okay, so you don't put that back in. Really quick. What is the symbol that indicates integration? That, so far, so good. You're not quite done. What symbol indicates integration? The elongated S and the DX yeah. or the DU or whatever. So once you have anti-differentiated, once you have integrated, those should go away because they've done their job. So like I love the student that would tell me square root of nine equals square root of three. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> right? Are you guys with me? Why would the square root still be there? It did its job. It should be gone. Okay. okay maybe, maybe. That's a good question. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's a little weird about why that is, but that's why I call that bookend. Uh, it's the first kind of bookend function we've ever seen. 
Okay. So one little thing I want to do. What if this problem would have been this instead? What did I put up there? Yeah. Why is this one apparently... Maybe you would even think it's not doable at all, which you would be fine. Because what's the only option I have for you? What's the only piece that's stuck? X plus 1. But what is its derivative? And, and I, don't I have x squared out there? All right. But it still will work. You mad man, Jeff. All right, watch. This is so cool. So I kind of like to try to bring in the flexibility in u sub. Because what's the whole point of u sub? Replace all the x shit with u shit. Once you do that, and if you've done everything legally, you can keep going. So watch this. This is kind of cool. I'm going to make u equal x plus 1 because I have to. I don't have to, but it, on this one, it's got to be that. And like you said, du would be dx. 1 dx, yes? But watch this. This is, this is the part that people forget. If u is x plus 1, x is... No, if u is x plus 1, solve for x. Can I replace everything now? What's x squared? U minus 1 squared. What's the square root of x plus 1? Square root of u, yes? So I'll put u to the 1 half. And what's dx? Du. Did I replace all the x shit with u shit? Yes. This step right here is so freaking cool. And, it, it, you know, it's like, you know, on one level it's like, of course. And on another level it's like, we're allowed to do that? <laughs> right? Because you're just learning this. You don't know what you're allowed to do yet. But that's, I did it. And now, why is this better? Can anyone tell me why that's better? Because now I can multiply this out. And then I can just distribute this. Yes? That's trying to be a one half. Okay. So now I can distribute that. So I get u to the, I can't think, five halves minus two u to the three halves plus u to the one half. And that's easy. Yes? Isn't that kind of neat? So this is your first little kind of foray into the flexibility in U sub. The purpose is to replace all X stuff with U stuff. And there are more than one, there's more than one way to do that. So what's this integral? U to the, did I show you the shortcut, right? The five plus two? 5 plus 2 and then put it over 2. And, of course, in front it's going to go the reciprocal of what I just wrote. Minus, this would be u to the 5 halves. So there would be a 2 fifths times the 2 that's there. Yes? Plus u to the 3 halves. There will be 2 thirds plus c. And then you just throw back in x plus 1 in place of u. And then you're done. All right, so you just put an x plus 1 in there. I don't feel like doing that. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So, what we're going to have to do next time is this is all about indefinite integrals and how they operate. Definite integrals, what the hell is going to happen to the limits? We can kind of look ahead to see. But we'll talk about that next time. Okay.